Praise God. It's, here it is every Wednesday night, and I'm so excited. You know, this past Sunday was a wonderful service. My goodness, I just thank uh, Brother Charlie for bringing the message that God told him, uh, told him to bring, and it was just, it was an awesome message, but me and him was talking Monday uh, about uh, when you all got out of the cars. Oh, my goodness, I'm telling you, it was just like being raptured out here then yeah. because everybody was standing out by the car, just standing there, and just you could just see the expression and the smiles on their faces. And listen, I'm telling you, it was awesome, and I cannot wait. I cannot wait to this Sunday when we get to come back in God's house and worship all together. I cannot wait to hear the message that pastor's bringing. I'm so excited already before we even get here Sunday, but it's so awesome to be able to come back to church. Oh, Thank yeah. God. See, it, it just shows you how much you miss Jesus oh, when, when you're away from God's people. You know, we see Jesus every day. We walk with the Holy Spirit every day in our life. But God says we've got to fellowship with one another. We've got to come together in God's house and, and worship him together. And when you don't do that, you don't feel that, that, that feeling that you need from the Holy Spirit. But anyway, uh, before we get into what God's laid on my heart, let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, this evening. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for such a beautiful weather you blessed us with. Thank you for, for that wonderful service this past Sunday. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person who was out there in that parking lot standing beside their cars and just worshiping, praising you and getting prayed over. Lord, we just thank you for all that. But God, I just, I'm going to go ahead and lift up this coming Sunday. Lord, I pray for anointing. I pray that you touch people's hearts, that they come to just to get filled again, Lord, with the Holy Spirit. I pray, dear Lord, that you bless our pastor as he prepares the message for Sunday. I know it's going to be an awesome message, Lord. And I just pray right now that you put the hedge protection around him and Trish, Lord, and, and, and guide them to lead us to, to get ready for this time we're in right now when that trumpet's getting ready to sound, Lord. Now, God, we just give you the praise and the glory. I pray, dear God, you have me behind the cross. And again, as I always pray, Lord, don't let nothing come out of this mouth that's not from you. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, I just pray that every heart every mind and every ear is open to receive the word that you've got for them, Lord, and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 You know, praise God. I was, Monday, I was riding around on my tractor, and God laid something on my heart uh, about the message today. And I've been, I've been, I love Old Testament. Uh, I, I know that the New Testament wipes away the Old Testament, but God put the Old Testament there for a reason. Amen. And I just love to go back in the Old Testament. You've heard me to preach on Adam and Eve. you heard me preach on a thing about Moses before. But God laid something on my heart. And this is the title of the message right here. Have we found grace in God's eye? Hallelujah. Think about that just a minute. Truly, have you literally found grace in God's eye? Has God looked down upon you and says, my good and faithful servant. You know, I've preached that before. But has God looked down upon you, and is he pleased with the way that you're doing in this world today? Is he pleased the way that we're all doing when we're out, out of church and going around different people? Is he pleased with you when you go to work and you're around other guys and ladies that you're working with and they're doing jokes and they're doing things? Are, are you laughing and going along with it? Is God's grace upon you because Jesus died for you to accept him and that's the only grace you'll get and the only way you'll get grace is through Jesus Christ Amen. because we don't deserve grace not a one of us but anyway God put this together I promise you and I'm going to have another title uh, here shortly and it's called is it time for the trumpet and these two really believe it or not goes together and here we're going we're gonna to start with Genesis and I love talking like I say in the book of, of Genesis, <clears throat> because that's when God spoke the world into existence. And he literally spoke it into existence. He said it and it happened. But we're going to be talking about a different story. We're going to be talking about the time of, of Noah. <clears throat> it says in Genesis 6, 5 through 6, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, <clears throat> and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Let me stop there just a minute. That tells me that there was a garden of Eden and God put Adam and Eve there and he made it perfect. 
I think about that. I love to talk about that all the time. I want you to picture a garden that was just perfect, and Adam and Eve was there to take care of it. And they literally took care of it. But when sin come in, chaos happened. Amen. So now we're at the time of Noah, when everybody, everybody in the world that was living then, all over creation, all, all over God's creation that he created, that they was continually evil. Not just every once in a while, not just sometimes, continually. That means they was all the time doing things they shouldn't be doing, constantly. They had no thought about God. They had no fear of God. They didn't care about God. All they cared about was their self. Does it kind of remind you of things today? Amen. I'm going to prove that to you here shortly. As this scripture goes on, and the Lord was sorry. Oh my goodness, I, I just need to stop there a minute. And the Lord was sorry. He was sorry that he made man on the earth. He was sorry that he created everyone on the earth. He was sorry. Can you imagine? Is God sorry today? Is he sorry that the way we're living? I think so. I think he's more sorry today. Let me tell you why I think he's more sorry today. Because he literally gave his only begotten son. And he died on that cross the most terrible death you can do. And he took the beating and the spit upon and everything that you could possibly could imagine. And the Bible says you couldn't even tell he was a man. And then we still go out here and live like a dog, like the devil. Something's wrong with this picture, you all. Amen. I think he's more sorry today. Because he said, I'm giving you my son. I'm giving you me. I'm sitting here dying literally for you. Because I love you so. And we as people, some some Christians, some's not that way, but some Christians take their eyes off of God. And they, I've seen literally leadership turn and, and walk away from God when they preach the word and they talk the word and they do this and they do that and they just took their eyes off God. You think God was so sorry he created them? My goodness, I feel, I feel sorry for that day of judgment if they don't turn back. If they don't get their eyes back on God, I feel sorry for anyone that won't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior today. It's, listen, that trumpet, I promise you, it's getting ready to sound. And again, I'm going to show you. I don't want to get ahead of myself. And then in that same scripture, it says that he had made men on the earth. And he, oh my goodness, and he was grieved in his heart. Listen to me, church. Are we grieving God's heart today? This is the new generation. This is a different generation. This is the generation where God says, this will not pass until I come back. We're living in that generation. Is he grieved? Or is he, or is he as happy with his people that says, I praise you and worship you all the time, God? I think he is. I think he's so happy when all these people last Sunday were standing by their cars. They literally come to church. They wanted to... Feel the Holy Spirit just receive everything that God's got for them. And I think they were so happy to get out of those cars and say, God, it's time. Hallelujah. It's time. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, don't grieve God's heart today. If you're doing something that's not right, turn from it. Amen. It's never too late until that trumpet sounds. Then it's too late. Let's change today. Let's don't be like it was back in that time. In Genesis. 6, 7 through 8, it says, So the Lord said, Now remember what I said just a minute ago? God spoke this world in, into existence. He spoke it. And God's saying something now. So the Lord said, I will, not Satan will, no man will, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, Creeping thing and birds and of the air. For I am, I hate to even hear this word again. I am sorry that I have made them. Can you imagine a creating God that loved us so much. That he cared so much and he gave, us a, gave them a beautiful garden back then. And said this is heaven on earth. You know, me and Pastor was talking last Sunday. What's it going to really, really feel and be like to walk through them pearly gates and walk into heaven? Oh my goodness. I think about that garden, how pretty it was. How the, how the flowers and the trees were perfect. Where there was no thorns. 
where there was no weeds, when you didn't have to plow a garden. God put water right through the middle of it, and it watered itself. And all Adam and Eve had to do was just look upon it and take care of it and, and think no insects eating, no, no fruit. Everything was perfect then. But that's nothing. That's nothing compared when we get to heaven. It's nothing compared when we get to heaven. You can't, see, you can't, you can't phantom. Streets of gold, you can't phantom what it really looks like. But I'm going to tell you what. When you walk up there, it's going to take your breath that God's already gave you. And it's not going to be no pain, no suffering. You don't have to worry about breathing because God's breathing for you. Oh, it's going to be a time that's going to be enjoyable. You don't, you, I mean, but the, the good thing about it is for eternity. Amen. How long is eternity? Forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. We're living in that generation, church, that God's getting ready to call us home. And then, in, in that same chapter, Verse 8, and I, I, I laugh every time Joey does this. He says, but, and this is a big but. This, the, truly, I, I'm telling you, this, this right here is a big but. He says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It didn't say Noah's wife found grace. It didn't say that Noah's three sons found grace. It didn't say that Noah's daughter-in-laws found grace. He said, but Noah found grace found grace in God's eye. The only one, the only one out of all the people in the world, including his wife and kids yes. and, and his daughter-in-laws, he is the only one that found grace. And by, by Noah finding grace in God's eye, God took care of his whole family. Amen. How are you doing in your family life? Listen to me. Men of the house, has God found grace in your eyes? Are you being the daddy that you're supposed to be? Are you being the husband are you supposed to be? Or you've got too much wrapped up in this world. Men, Pastor, we were just talking a while ago. We both walked by the altar and God says, pray. Listen, I walked by and I was putting stuff together, doing things, and God says, pray. Pastor, come in just a little bit, and he walked across through there, and he was doing things. He said, pray. He his knees. And we just talked about how awesome God is, that when he says do something, do it. we got to have time for God. Listen to me. Is your kid seeing you pray at home? Is your kid seeing you pray when you go out to eat somewhere? Is your kid seeing you how you really are? If we, now listen, I love this about children. Little small kids will tell you the truth. They won't leave nothing out. They'll tell you everything that happened in, in every which way. But I'm telling you, sometimes you, when you take your kids with you, I'll tell you, it's, it's unreal. I'm going to share this one story with, about my own son. We was out there and we had these flower boxes where we used to live underneath our windows. And this weed was growing up through there and my wife hadn't put flowers in it yet. And we was walking through there and my son says, what is that ugly looking thing or something about that weed? I said, oh, that's a marijuana plant. Just, that's what I told him, just laughing right on. That next day we had a family come over. We was walking by that same place and my son looked up there to that plant, looked back to this man, he looked up at him, my boy, my boy was young, real little then, he said, that's a marijuana plant. <laughs> I could have went clear underneath that, underneath there, underneath that plant, I could have I went underneath that box and hid myself. But see, you gotta be careful what you say, because the kids will tell the truth, yeah. whether you wanna hear it or not. Amen. And I'm telling you, we need to let our kids, if we, had our, if we take our kids out right now and brought them to church, Set them up on this front row, which I miss, but been missing them, those kids' children's time. Set them up on that front row. And we ask this question to them. How is your mama and daddy doing? What would they say? Oh, come on. I guarantee you there's a lot of you right now don't want your kids up there saying nothing. Because I've been there in my past. Good word. Let me tell you, kids will tell the truth. Kids will tell the truth. In Genesis 6, 12 through 13 says, So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. I'm going to stop for a minute. God is looking upon the earth today. Amen. Is it corrupt? Yes. Huh? I think it's worse now than it was back then. Amen. I do. I think it's time. Time is running out. And I really believe the only reason God hasn't come is one more. Yes, There's hallelujah. one more that God's wanting to get home. There's hallelujah. one more. But I'm telling you, God is about finished. Because the, the, the Bible has to fulfill itself and it's about done. So God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt. For all, all flesh 
had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. You think God loved doing that? No, he hated it. He hated the way they was living. He hates the way that people live today. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them. And guess what? He did. He, he shut the door on the ark when he told Noah to build the ark. He says, get two of each animal and take with you. Take your three sons, your three daughter-in-laws, your wife, and you go in and you shut the door. But let me tell you what Noah did before that time. He preached to the people. He begged the people. They made fun of him. They laughed at him. What are people doing today when we're trying to preach the truth and we're telling you the end's coming near? They're making fun of us. They're yeah. laughing about us. They say, oh, this is just nothing going to happen. This, everything's just going to be all right. It's just part of life. No, it's not part of life. It's what God wrote in the Word from the very beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. Amen. And from that point to now, which we're living in Revelation now. We're living in the time the tribulation is getting ready to happen. And God is getting ready to take his people home. Hallelujah. And he says, there will not, that door will shut. And once that door shuts, there's not going to be another chance. The only chance you're going to have, you're going to have to answer to the Antichrist. When us believers have done raptured and gone to be with him, you're going to be answering to the Antichrist. And if you say yes to Jesus, you will die a horrible death. The Bible tells me you will be punished in every way because the Antichrist is not going to want you to do anything with Jesus. He doesn't even want to hear about the word Jesus. So you've got to do something. You've got to make a choice. Do you want to wait and be left behind? Or do you want to be ready when the rapture comes and you go with us? That's the choice I would make. Amen. I would make it. Now let's get ready and get raptured out here together. Hallelujah. Get raptured out here together. This is, the, this is the, another good one. This is what I love. It is time for the trumpet. It is time for the trumpet. Whoa! How do you know? John, how do you know it's time for the trumpet? Well, I'm going to show you what the word says. And you just make your own choice. In Matthew 24, 37 through 38, it says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Let me tell you, there was evil in the time of Noah. Yes. Everything was bad. Everything was wrong. There's evil today. This, I ask you to do this. I don't like for anybody to watch the news because there's nothing but depression. But to go in tomorrow and turn your, your TV on, channel 11, 3, 32, 4, I don't care what channel it is on the news, and you see if there's anything good happening. I don't care. There's riotings. There, there, there's people killing each other. There's, there's even family killing family. Literally tearing them apart and burying them. I mean, you think God is not sorry that he created some of the people today as he was back then? Do you don't think it's not as bad now as it was then? Listen, we have got computers. We have got telephones. We can look at pornography anytime we want. We can look at things that get so much sin in our eyes and our heart that they couldn't even do back then. And they was evil back then. That God was saying they were so evil it was just continually they was living in it. I'm telling you, there's continually people living in today. They're living with homosexuality. They were living with thieves and stealing and everything, every kind of sin you can imagine. But let me tell you this, please listen to me. Every sin that I mention, you can turn from it and get on your knees and cry to God and ask Jesus Christ in your oh, life yeah. and he will take it before that trumpet blows yes. because I'm telling you, it's time. Yes, it's it's time. time for that trumpet. It's time for, this, for all this to change. God has said, get ready. He is going to blow that trumpet just real soon. You, it's getting ready to happen. I'm going to prove it to you in some more scripture. Hallelujah. My goodness. Glory to God. God shut the door at the ark and he's getting ready to close the door when we're raptured out of here. Amen. Matthew 24, 39. It says, And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. See, I'm preaching the truth to you. Amen. Pastor preaches the truth to you. We're going to have things left here when we're gone. Yes. And you're not going to be able to say, Well, I did not know. I did not hear it. I did. Well, the only reason you did not know, the only reason you did not hear it, is because you wasn't listening. Amen. 
You wasn't taking the truth that God gave you and done what you're supposed to do with it. And that was just like it was back in Noah's day. He was up there preaching the word. He told them everything. And he says, please come get on the ship with me. Follow me. Turn from your wicked ways because the flood's coming. They laughed at him. But I guarantee you, when that door of God's hand shut that door, Hallelujah. I guarantee you the people was crying and screaming with their little kids out there with them and everything that was going on. And Noah probably heard all that and he was sad. Jesus. Just like when people are going to be sad today when they're left behind and we're gone. When their family members are gone, they're going to say, what happened? And they're going to finally listen and say, oh, I remember what Noah did on the ark. He told them, but they didn't listen. And the preacher told me, but I didn't listen. Jesus. I didn't listen. It's going to be too late. No. It's going to be too late. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52 says, listen to this church, please listen to me. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Praise God. Oh. But we shall... All be changed. Who's we? Us. us. It's us. We're going to be here this time. We're here now. The Bible tells me again, this generation will not pass. When Israel becomes a nation, they become a nation in 1948. From that generation to now, it will not pass till this happens. In a moment, can you imagine? In a twinkling of an eye. I mean, I can't. I thought about this when I was preparing it. I try to twinkle my eye. And I think, my goodness, I, I can't even do it fast enough. That's how God. That's how fast it's going to be, Pastor. It, just like that. Just oh, you can't even speak it fast enough. It's God's going to happen. Just in a, in a twinkling of an eye. Glory. At the last trumpet. Oh my goodness! For the trumpet will sound, whew, whoo, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. We're going to come out of these old rough bodies and be in a body cre created by God that's going to be perfect. No more hurting. No, if, if for some that's got an arm gone or a leg gone or some that can't see or can't hear or you got some kind of disease or you got cancer, that moment, that twinkling of an eye, that will all be wiped away and you're going to be with Jesus for eternity. Forever and ever and ever. Oh. And my goodness, can you imagine not having a body that aches? Oh, that you got up, get up out of bed is perfect. Thank you Lord. jump up and run to and oh. you get excited. My goodness, what kind of body? My, why can't you believe that church? Why can't, I'm getting excited, tore up right. Woo! I don't even know what words coming out of my mouth. Oh, anymore. God. Uh, and this next scripture Thank you, is the very same thing. So this is in 1 Corinthians a while ago. Now I'm in 1 Thessalonians. Look what it says. 4, 15 through 17. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, which is us, will by no means precede those who are asleep. We won't die. We're going to be in a twinkling of an eye. For the Lord himself, whoo, for the Lord himself, for Amen. Jesus Christ himself, will descend from heaven, listen, whoop, with a shout. Whoa, listen, I, I have been in churches in my whole life, and there's so many churches that I would have to sit on a pew, and I couldn't even whisper without getting in trouble. This tells me that God tells you, get in church, shout for his glory. Get excited for his glory. Be praising for God, because God himself, look at it. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Woo! I'm telling you, we better be shouting in church today. Yes. We better be praising God. Don't be sitting with your hands on your bottom, yeah, underneath amen. your bottom, and, and sitting there and not and afraid to even say amen. Listen, jump up and run around the church. I don't care. As long as you're doing it not for you, but for God. You. Main thing you're doing is for God because you're excited for what the Holy Spirit's getting ready to do. Hallelujah. Listen to me. We're not going to be in this building very much longer. We're going to be raptured out of here. Yes. Let's have some next Sunday. Let's get so this Glory coming Sunday. Let's get excited. Let's praise God. Let's shout, shout. because God loves us so praise much. Father. Praise the Lord. Praise. With the voice of an archangel, woo, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Thank you, Father. The minute the dead in Christ rise, we're right behind them, Pastor. Amen. And we're not going to die. We're going to be jumping. We're going to be gone in the twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye. And listen, my last scripture, and this, is, this one here just does the whole message. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, I want you to take a look at this picture. I want you to look real close at it. 
There's a man and a woman holding arms. There's another one over there holding arms. There's that's us right there. Yes. That's, yes. That, look, that's us in a twinkling of an eye. Thank you, Lord. That's us. But look where we're heading to. Jesus Christ. Look, look, look who it is. Hallelujah. It's 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 Jesus, the Son of God, God Hallelujah. Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit yes. all in one, Hallelujah. standing there with his arms wide open, saying, it's time. it's time. And the trumpet sounded. I done made that shout. And look at us go. I mean, just in a twinkling of an eye, that's where we're going. Look in this scripture, what it says. Oh, then we who are alive, that's us, church, yes. and remain shall be caught up. That's rapture yes. together with them in the clouds to meet who? Right. The Lord in the air. And thus we shall always, oh my goodness, be with the Lord. That's where we're going to spend eternity. My goodness, that's the end of the story. Hallelujah. We took, I took you to the beginning of Genesis. And look what's happened from the time of Genesis all the way to the time of Revelation. Look what's happened. But that's still not the end. That's, that's the end for us. We're going to be with God. But there's going to be people here left behind. That's where our hearts need to be right now, is reaching out, church, to the ones that don't know about him. Preach the truth to them. I don't care what they say, what they call you, whatever bad name you, they say you are. You keep loving them. You keep preaching the truth to them. You keep telling them that Jesus loves them no matter what. Amen. And the trumpet is getting ready to sound. Amen. And God is getting ready to shout. Ooh, and I cannot stand it anymore. I cannot wait till that time comes. Please, church, get on your knees. Ask God to heal this land. And, 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 and ask God to show you that one lost soul that you can go and tell about Jesus. You can't save them. Don't push it on them. Just go and tell them about Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come asking for forgiveness of anything that I haven't gone to anybody that you've showed me that I need to go tell them about Jesus. I do know you showed me this while preparing this message that that trumpet is getting ready to sound, that you're, sh you're getting ready to make a loud shout, Lord, that people is going to be ready to be raptured out here. But God, please help us find that one loss that you want to come because that's what it's going to take before you come. So God, let us go out there into this whole wicked world, tell people about your son Jesus, what he did, how he loves them, and he loves you. And God, I just pray that we'll be obedient to do that. God, we love you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for Holy Spirit living in us. And God, thank you most of all for you, Father, because you are one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we love you with all our hearts. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. God. Hallelujah.